so for thing one today, I have some knitting to show you. I do have some progress on my sweater today, but I will tell you that my sweater is on hold now. It's now officially on hold. I have a couple things that I need to get done in a short amount of time, so my sweater is on pause until February, um, which is only a couple days, because today is Monday, and it's January 27th. So this is the Miranda sweater. This is the sweater I'm doing for the knit-along that I have going in my group. So if you are not a member of the group and you're knitting a sweater, you should join the group and come show us your sweater. Uh, if you are a member of the group and you're knitting your sweater, how you doing? How's it coming? I know we're we're getting people finishing. We're seeing lots and lots of progress and good good things going on. So come on over and join us. The knit along runs from uh, we cast on in January. Actually, I cast on on New Year's Eve, so you were allowed to do that. Uh, I cast on New Year's Eve, and the knit along runs until March 1st. So all of January and all of February to finish a sweater. So if you're somebody who can finish a sweater in less than a month, you're welcome to join in. I know we have at least one finish, um, and I'm expecting Sharon V to finish any day now as well. Um, so it's it's getting really exciting because people are finishing and showing good progress pictures, and everything looks really nice. Um, so. Come on over and join us. So this is my sweater. This is Miranda. This is the top-down raglan that has this lovely center stitch. And you actually do your increasing in the center panel. So if you can see, and I really don't know that I'm doing mine right. I'm hoping that when it blocks, this stitch will close up some because it doesn't look quite like just a knit or purl. But you increase in that center panel, which is, is very interesting, and that's that's the part that's keeping your interest because the rest is just plain stockinette. Um, the increases for the raglan were a little different on this sweater than on other sweaters that I'd done. I don't want to give too much away um, because it's not a free pattern, but the um, the way you increase and on the raglan is different at different points than you would normally expect on a raglan sweater. So. It's um it's quite interesting. And so I'm just about down. I think I have maybe about 20 more rows until I need to start the pocket because this sweater has lots of options. It is it's the top down raglan. It's got that center panel, but it can be short sleeve or long sleeve and it could have a hood or not a hood and it could have a pocket or not a pocket. So there's lots of choices to it. And let me make sure I'm mentioning the designer and everything. I bad at that. I need to get better. So this pattern is by Jose, Josie, Josie probably, Paquin, there she is, um, and it's the Miranda sweater, and this is pretty much the version I'm doing, I am, not, I don't think I'm going to do a hood just because of the yarn that I'm using, um, but you never can tell, I might decide that I want to do a hood anyway because I have tons of yarn, I have way more yarn than I'll need, so and it's it's very very small yardage for my size I think I would need if I actually do a hood to do a short sleeve hooded garment that has a little bit of positive ease I think I need like right at 900 yards that's not much at all that's like a vest <laughs> so that's not that's not too much at all um, but again the sweater is on pause because I have some things that I need to do soon so um, what am I gonna talk about first I am a member of the 12 in 2014 group, which is used to be 12 and 12 group, where you want to knit 12 pairs of socks in the year. And I do. I want to knit 12 pairs of socks. And you're allowed to, for both January and February, you're allowed to use a work in progress as your sock. So I am definitely taking that up, taking that offer, and finishing up my socks on a plain sock. So here's the first sock that I finished um, just after Christmas. Here's the second sock that I messed up just after Christmas. And I'm back to, I'm not quite back to where I was because I still have, oh, I still have a couple, just a couple little wraps going around. This is the yarn that I wrapped back up after I discovered I messed up um, because I was doing the cable on the same side as this sock, which actually is not a big deal. I could have left it and then I'd have, I'd have had my cables going down the left side of both feet, but I didn't want that. That way, this then this sock would have been on the outside of the foot, and the other, the right sock would have been on the inside, like on the big toe of the foot. And I didn't want that. That's not how the pattern's written, so I ripped it out and I started again. And so I did a lot of traveling. I'll talk about that later um, when we get to um, 
everyone needs a need. I just have one small little thing. Um, actually, maybe two. I did a lot of traveling yesterday by Metro, so I probably knit, I would say, this much. I, I know I crossed three cables while I was traveling. And uh, waiting on Metro, well, not waiting on Metro, mate. Waiting on Metro was way too cold because it was still about 20 degrees here. So I was not knitting while I was standing outside. But as soon as I was able to sit on a train, because my my stop on our Metro system is at the very end of the, of the line. So even though once a train comes in to drop people off, there's usually like a five-minute wait, but they'll let you sit on the train and wait. So I got a little bit warmer, and I sat on the train and knitted for a little bit, and I knitted the whole way that we were riding. And... Um, the whole way back, and actually the whole way back plus a little bit of time in one of the stops, the one stop that I had to tra where I had to transfer trains, um, was an indoor station, and it was wasn't too cold in there. So I did have my gloves off, knitting then. So I got a lot done on the sock then. Um, I may be about four more cables away from starting the gusset, so I can do the heel. So these should be done, should be okay. But I need to have these done by the end of the week. So. This and the next project that I'm working on are all that I'm going to do for the rest of the week. Okay, so I have a baby shower to go to on Friday. It's just a mini shower, and it's actually for a former co-worker. So I'm doing just a couple little things. I'm actually going to put together a bag of um, washcloths and some of the Johnson's Lavender Baby baby wash. I loved that stuff. That was a lifesaver. When my son was little, I always gave him a bath at night and with the lavender lotion or the lavender wash and the lavender lotion. And it helped to calm him down because my son is very busy and he always was. So I always have used that. So I'm just going to do, I, I had planned on doing a couple of these little washcloths, but I think I'm only going to do one of each color. I had the, I had the green and the yellow and the blue to do. I knitted the yellow first, and I did this on my first snow day last week. <laughs> so I knitted a little yellow ducky. Oh, and I don't know if you can see him with the lighting behind. And is this, oh, because he's upside down maybe. <laughs> so there's the little ducky. And he is kind of hard to see with the lighting behind. So hopefully you can see that. Maybe if I, let me do this and then sit up a little bit. Can you see the ducky? You see his tail and his body, and there's his little chest, and there's his little bill. And his cute little round head, I think is very cute. Um, and there he is from the garter side. I like him better on the stockinette side, though. But either way, um, very cute. Very, very cute. So that's one. This wound up really, really big. This is like the whole, this will cover the whole baby, right? <laughs> put, this is what you put on the baby when it's newborn. You put this on over them when they're sitting in the little, the little tub thing. So that one's cute. Very big, though. I wasn't expecting it to be that big. Um, if I were to do this again, I might try and see, like, maybe percentage-wise how I could cut it down and make a, make a smaller one. Because I think the smaller ones, especially if you're washing a little person, the smaller ones might be a little more practical. But it's still very cute, even if she kind of just put it, you know, decoratively in the nursery or in the bathroom or something. My sister's like that. My sister has a frog bathroom for her son. And, like, the only thing you do is you go in there and you wash the baby. Nobody uses the bathroom in there. Nobody uses the sink. They go to the bathroom. They wash the baby. They leave the bathroom. But it's all decorated in frogs, and the, the countertop is all cute, and mm, whatever. Then I knit, I had an idea that I would knit, um, I'd been seeing these little leaf washcloths, and I had the idea that with the green skein of yarn, I would knit a bunch of different shapes of leaves. So, I knit this one leaf here. And this was from, where did my notes go? This one is called the just called the Leafy Washcloth, and it's a free pattern on Ravelry. Um, and it winds up being a little bit concave at first, so when you block it and flatten it out, it will actually lay flat um, for storage purposes and all, and for appearance, But and I still need to weave in ends. But that was really cute, and that was pretty much intuitive. I had gotten most of the increases done, increases here, I'd gotten most of the increases done here at the house, and then I took this with me over the weekend when I went to... Um, some things over the weekend and actually I went to um, the JDRF the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation had their had a couple is having kickoff events and they had one over the weekend that I went to with my son and I knew that I'd be kind of sitting around I actually didn't do any knitting while we were there listening because uh, actually one of my friends ended up talking so I didn't want to knit and not pay attention to her so 
I, I, but I did get it done at, afterwards when I went to get a pedicure. And I left the pattern at home, but I remembered that after I did the decreases that I knit for a little bit straight, which you can see that center section is straight. And then there are the decreases coming back up. And I did all of this kind of just, I winged it. I did what I thought I needed to do based on down here. <laughs> and I knew what the shape was, so I just kind of made it up as I was going. So that was that. I did that at the kickoff event. Oh, and the kickoff event was for their um, for their walks. My family does the JDRF walk each year. We have Team Zachary, uh, and this will be the third year, third year, fourth year. This will be our, oh my gosh, this will be our fourth walk. Um, and I decided that since, you know, we're both kind of into, you know, getting, building ourselves up and doing the training and everything to make sure that we run the events, that we would kind of pay a little more attention to the fundraising aspect too. So I'm hoping that this will be the best event fundraising wise uh, for my family that we've ever done. And we did, we've done pretty well. We've done, I think a little bit more than average for just a, a family that shows up and says, Hey, yeah, we're going to walk, especially since last week. We, I didn't know we were going to walk until the day before. <laughs> um, so I'm hoping that this year my family can have the best one ever. And I think our best year was our second year in, and we raised right around $2,000. So I'm hoping that we'll do even better than that this year. And then the third washcloth is out of the blue skein that I had. And this one is called the Leafy Surprise Cloth. So with this one, it's basically, it's a very similar construction to this. You do, um, and it makes it a little concave, but this is going from side to side rather than from top to bottom. So, and actually it's not the same construction. It's short rows and it's side to side. It's not the same at all, but it does make a little concave kind of bubble out of it. So you knit one leaf. This was the first leaf that I did. And then when you, you are increasing to a point, then you decrease to a point. And these are all free by the way on Ravelry. And then you just start the leaf again and you start it, you increase to a point and then you decrease back down. Then you increase to a point and you decrease back down. So I'm on my last one. So this is the last one I'll have to do here. And then once you get this last one, once I get this last one done, I'll just sew the, the ending to the beginning. I'll probably try and pick this row up while I'm binding off. And presto changeo, you have a washcloth done. And I think this one is going to work out nice. Probably fold it in half. It'll be a good a good um, length and a good um, size for scrubbing. For kind of holding on to an end and scrubbing. Not that you scrub babies all that much, but, you know, rubbing. So these are all turning out really cute. I like them. Cotton does bother my hands, though. I really would like to try, when I get to um, Everyone Needs a Need, where I was this weekend, um... I saw some organic cotton that I was very tempted to get, but I still have kitchen cotton around, so I didn't need organic cotton. So I skipped it, but I would really like to try and see if maybe the organic cotton feels even a little softer in the skein, and I wonder if that would be as hard on my hands as the kitchen cotton is. So, I don't know, but that's the other thing that I'm working on this week, and then that's it. That is it for my knitting. I'm just finishing baby gifts and socks. That's it. If I finish all of that before the week ends, then I can work on my sweater. If not, that's all I'm doing. That's it. So that's it for thing one for the active knitting. Um, and I don't even have any finished objects. Nope, I don't have any finished objects either. So um, I'm also going to come back. I'd like to talk about my knit group at school. I just came from there. We meet on Mondays. Um, but I'll save that for if we're running good on time as well. So I, I might come back to that and put and maybe make that part of Mulberry Street. All right, so let's move on to thing two, which is spinning. Okay. Oh, the things you can think is things that I'm planning on knitting. And what I'm plan what I'm thinking about knitting, I keep on kind of revising my plan for the Ravel in It games. The Ravel in It games are coming. If you're not already signed up, I had, didn't mention this before, but I am going to participate on Team Sasquatch. I also am a member of a group called Yarn Snobs Incorporated, and we have a team as well. So I'm going to be kind of going back and forth between those two teams and just kind of using, you know, getting the camaraderie with them. I'm not really even going to probably enter anything for challenges or prizes or anything. I'm just going to do it for my own sake. I know somebody else mentioned this. I heard them say that it's really neat to, I think it might have been Jasmine and Gigi from the Knit Girls, from the, the Knitmore Girls, um, that said 
you know, it's kind of nice to look back at that garment and say, oh, that was my Olympic project from, you know, Sochi, or that was my, those were my um, Olympic socks from when we were in Calgary, or something like that, because you kind of associate that time with that finished item. So what I would like to do, everybody knows that I've already said a couple times that I'm planning on doing the Follow Your Arrow Mystery Shawl, which is fabulous. I'm having such a good time following that. If you haven't um, looked at that yet, um, Isolde Teague, which I watched one of her videos, and I don't know why I assumed that she was not American. I expected her to have some foreign accent. <laughs> She's plain old American. Well, I guess not plain old American, but I thought she was foreign. And she's not. She sounds like me, pretty much. I, I, I really expected an accent when I was watching her. It took me a couple minutes to go, she's American. Oh, my goodness. So, funny. that, And, you know, a little aside, but Isolde Teague, fabulous designer. This is her first mystery shawl, and everybody has been doing it. So, I guess maybe not everybody, if this is the first you're hearing of it. Um, you should go check it out because it's really fun. It's called the Follow Your Arrow Mystery Shawl. And each week she gives out two clues and you can follow whichever clue you want. So I've been kind of plodding along and the first clue came out and I thought, oh, I would not do that one. I would definitely do this one. And then when the second clue came out, I saw the one that I kind of snubbed my nose at and I went, those two together look really good. And now that the third one is out, I've only been able to peek a little bit and, you know, people aren't finished with the clue, but they've just got, you know, a little bit on there. I think I looked at about 11 o'clock, which is about my lunchtime when my kids are away at special. And I popped on Ravelry real quick just to see. And the original one that I snubbed my nose at looks so fabulous now that the other clues are on there. So I, I don't know. I had said that I wanted to do that as my Ravelin at Games project and that I knew that I was going to get a chance to kind of see what other people were doing and be able to choose really well for what I really, really wanted and would really, really like at the end. And I really, I just, could I say really a little more? I'm very excited to get that started. And I think it's going to be perfect. When I am able to choose and see exactly what I want to do, it's going to work out just great. Because by the time I get to Clue 5, I'll even be able to see what the other Clue 5s look like. That's how, how off it's going to be. Because I think when the games, when the Olympics start, there'll only be one Clue left to be released. So by the time I start knitting and catch up to where that clue will be, I'm sure it won't take me, I'm sure I won't be able to do it in just a week. I'm sure it'll take probably two weeks at least. The clues look very manageable though, and you know, they don't seem to be overwhelming or daunting or too involved. I think the first clue, some friends at Knitting and I were noticing that the first clue you wind up with a lot of stitches on your needle at the end of clue one, but it still doesn't seem like it's too massively long. Um, and the second and third clues look you know, the lo the rows are longer, but they're also shorter. There's a shorter amount of rows in each clue. So, I don't know. I'm having a lot of fun watching that, and I definitely will be doing that. I don't think I have the bag to show you the yarn. Yes, I do. So, here is, I think. No, it's not. Here is, yes, the yarn I'm going to use. I am going to do a single color shawl. Um, although someone I saw today, somebody did, is knitting it, knitting theirs in um, the Connie, K-A-U-N-I, the Connie yarn, the rainbow, it's perfect. Oh, it looks so nice. But these, this is what I'm doing for mine. These two skeins are the same colorway from Fiber File, Hand Dyed Yarns and Fibers. This is... 300, each one is 375 yards of superwash merino, cashmere, and nylon, and it's a heavy fingering weight. This colorway is called Willow, um, and I'm in a, I'm on a big green kick. <laughs> Lots of things that I knit are green these days, um, but I just, I love green, and this, I just think this is going to be very, very pretty, and I'm going to stick to my idea and do a two-color shawl, although I went over this last week. This skein is much more brown than this skein, so... It's two, it's one color, but did I just say I was going to do two colors? I'm doing a one color skein, but that one brown skein is very, very much, or the one skein is, has a lot of brown in it compared to the other, and we'll leave it at that. All right. Uh, this is my sock head hat. I've done nothing on that. Don't need to show you that. This was some yarn that I was doing for some hats that I'll get back to later. 
this is my shawl of my mother's that I need to fix. And the other things that I want to show you, I want to, so I want to finish. I want to finish the sweaters that I have on the needles because I have three sweaters on the needles. I have my Miranda, so I'm going to finish that up for the Olympics. And if I finish that up for the Olympics, then I'll definitely be finished by the end of my knit along because you need to be finished by March 1st. But I also have folded on the needles and I haven't shown you guys these in a while so I figured I would. I'm doing folded out of Miss Babs. I think this is the oh, Babette skeins in the Vlad's colorway. It's her sock yarn and folded is in a, is a fingering weight sweater. So this is the body Go. This is the body up until the point where I need to attach the sleeves and here are the two sleeves that I'm doing two at a time in the round on a big magic loop. And this is, again, this is the Vlad's colorway and I love this. It's a beautiful, shiny brick red um, and I really, really like it. There it is. Sorry, I was holding it on the wrong side. And this is not... I. I took this out of its bag because I, was, I wasn't knitting on it and I needed the bag for something else. So I don't have the, the skeins, the ball, ball bands with me to show you, but it's, I want to say it's Miss Babs. I think, I think it's the, is there a Babette skein for sock yarn? It's, it's merino and nylon, definitely a nice line of nylon because you can see it's got a beautiful sheen to it. And I really would like to finish this because this is one of those winters. Last winter, I could wear my hand knits in my classroom. This year, I cannot. It's sweltering in my room. The other day, I had my door open when the kids were away at lunch and recess and specials. I had my door open to the outside, and you could see, as I'm sitting at my desk looking at the open door, you could see the heat wafting out of the room. It's ridiculous. So, want to finish the folded and I also want to finish my water's edge cardigan. I've been plugging away on this. The problem is here I'm at the 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 pleat and the pleat has like 400 500 yard um stitches on it. So it takes a long time to go across one row. So this is my water's edge. You can tell it's been folded into a bag for a long time. And I'm doing my water's edge out of Madeline Tosh in the well water colorway and I think it's just beautiful and I'm nearly finished I do I am gonna make my pleat a little bit longer than it recommends in the pattern if I knit it to the length that it recommends it does not fall at a flattering point for my body so I am gonna knit the pleat a little bit longer than it than the pattern suggests but I'm nearly finished there and then I just have to do sleeves and I'll be done so I think that's a reasonable goal is to Finish Miranda, Water's Edge, and Folded, and my shawl. That might be a little bit much, but I really do want to. So this is in the Tosh DK, and it's the Wellwater colorway. And there's the Madeline Tosh label. So those are the things that I'm looking at. Those are the things that I'm considering. I'm going to do one last segment. I'm going to do... Everyone needs a need and tell you where I went this weekend and then I have a couple little extras for today. With need. I went to I took a trip. I told you I took the metro to go downtown yesterday and I took a trip to there's a yarn store in DC. I live just outside of DC and there's a yarn store in DC that I had never been to called Looped Yarn Works. And I've heard great things about it. Um, and it's actually very convenient to take Metro. If you take Metro and there's no Metro delays, there um, you take Metro, you get off at the, at the correct Metro stop, and then you just walk maybe half a block up the hill, and you're there. So it couldn't be more convenient. Um, and it's in a really great neighborhood. Um, it's in a really great neighborhood. They have a very small space, so I hope somebody near them moves out of that building and they're able to kind of expand into the other space because it's very cramped in there. But nice people beautiful yarns. They carry all the top brands. I got to see um, Quince and Company for the first time face to face. Oh, it's beautiful. I almost came home with some of that. Um, so I went looking for a specific yarn for a friend because I'm in a swap with my yarn snobs girls and they carried the yarn. I couldn't find the yarn online. They carried the yarn 
I wasn't sure if the other yarn store that I'm used to in Alexandria, Virginia, because I also am very close to what I what I probably could, should consider my my local yarn store now is um, Fiber Space in Alexandria, Virginia, and I know they carry Madeline Tosh too, but I wasn't sure if they carried the Chunky. So my partner knows who she is. She knows I'm her partner because she's in charge of the swap. But if um, Mia, if you're watching this, I went looking for your stuff. <laughs> Um, so I went looking for Madeline Tosh Chunky, and the Looped Yarn Works has Madeline Tosh Chunky, but they did not have the colorway that I was looking for. And so I did all that, and like I said, there were metro delays, so it took me nearly an hour to get down there in the freezing cold, and I decided that I was not coming home without a skein of yarn. <laughs> so they're one of the few stores that I know that you can walk into that sells Koigu. Um, Koigu, from what I understand, is a very hard company to get on their list so whenever I see Koigu I try and buy and I I love to collect the little speckled skeins I just I love the speckled Koigu oh, I love it I love it I love it and I, I really think that if you find just the right thing to do with one skein that you can really get away with buying one skein so since I wasn't supposed to be buying yarn for myself anyway I came away with just one skein of yarn and another little treat but one skein of lovely speckled koigu. So this was my treat for trekking down there. Isn't it pretty? Oh, I love it. It's so pretty. So this one, and koigu is all colorways, but this is the 706, P706, and then it's D400. But that, oh, I just, I love the speckles and the, the variegation in these skeins. I just love them. So what I plan on doing with this is um, a sock. If you, if I do an alternating toe and heel of, or contrasting toe and heel, I can probably do it. And so from this skein, I'm thinking I could use, I have a bunch of greens. I could maybe even do, if you look at that skein, that strand there, it's kind of a bluey green. Although now it looked like there was a little bit of brown in there too. But I could maybe use my leftover um, Malabrigo Solis for my toes and heels. I have some cephalopod upstairs. The um, the VW Bug colorway would be a good toe and heel because it's green. That might be an option. So I don't know. I, I think I have a lot of options for what I could do for toes and heels with that. So that is my one little souvenir skein from Vizzing Loops. Although I did buy, let me grab this bag again. I did buy because I've always wanted to buy the little skinny Notions bags from Jessalou, um Stitch by Jessalou, and I can never find them. Every time I go to find them online, they're gone. But they had them, they had them. And so I got these little robots. Very cute. And I just love this bag. It feels very sturdy. It's it's almost a little padded, like she put some quilting in there too. I think it's more than just the interfacing in there. There's like a little bit of extra padding in there. Um, I love that she's got a little ribbon on her zipper. And inside it looks all computery too. So I thought that was really cute. Cute, cute, cute. So stitched by Jessa Lou. Cute little notions bag. I'd wanted some. So I got just, just those two things when I was at Looped Yarn Works yesterday. So I'm back to plan B for <laughs> my friend, for my pal, for my swap. But I have until, I think, val just after Valentine's Day. Which I'd like to actually get it to her before Valentine's Day. But I still, I still have a little while, a little ways to play around with it. So I'm not going to. Okay, so thing two is spinning, and I've been having fun with my spinning lately. I was finishing up spinning some Fat Cat Knits fiber. I think, I don't know where the tag went. I know the name of it. I know I had six ounces of a gradient, gradient dyed braid. I think it's Polworth, but I'm not positive. But I think. And while I was finishing that, I realized that I needed to clean my wheel off <laughs> because I didn't have any bobbins left. And actually, the, I spun, I, I did this as a true three-ply, so I'll go ahead and show you this one. Here is the skein. And I did this as a three-ply, and so I, I had to use three bobbins for it. And then I realized I didn't have another bobbin. Actually, when I was on the second ply, I thought, uh-oh, I don't have another bobbin free for the third ply. So actually, the third skein, or the third ply was on, I put it on top of something that was already on a bobbin. <laughs> I had a bobbin that was only like maybe a quarter full and I just 
started attached it to the end of that, tied a little knot and attached it to the end of that and spun on top of what was already there. So then I needed to clean off a bobbin and I'll show you the skein that I wound up because of that. But this was the Cool Madras. This was her colorway of the month. Or I think she actually makes it, um, it's a it's a voting type thing and I think it actually runs for two months at a time where she puts up a bunch of different colorways and says okay which one is everybody's favorite that's gonna be the one that gets a discount and so I think you get 10 per is it 10 percent off or is 15 percent off it's anyway it's a good deal because it's fat cat knits and you always want it and you can't buy it all right so I had looked at this one and I said oh my gosh I would only buy it if that one won and sure enough that one won so I had to get it right but this one on this in the gradient in the braid went from white which I have very little of pure pure white that was the very beginning and I had very little I think that's this these strands are even two strands of white I know it's very hard to see two strands of white and one strand that's still a little bit purpley like this and I actually off of one skein I took off a big chunk of the purple the navy bluey purple and ripped it off because I could tell that it was just it was going to go forever longer than the than the um than the other two two um plies. So it goes from the white to the purple. I'm trying to find a place where you can see that. Maybe in here. So it goes from white to purple to green and you can see there where it was very green and blue at the same time for a long time. And there's very little of the green. So there's like a limey green there. And then it goes to from the limey green into the deep royal blue purple color. And it's really, really pretty. And I really love this. I like how it turned out. It turned out right at a worsted weight. It's pretty much even overall. And I would like to do... I would like to do a Zuzu's Petals with this. So Zuzu's Petals is a cowl that looks more like a shawl. It has, it's longer in the front and has lace on lace um, around the edge at the front and then it gets a little bit closer to your neck. Um, so it looks like it's a shawl if it's just there, but it's, it's done cowl style. So it's in the round the whole way and it's closed all the way up. Um, and it's written for worsted or DK weight. So this I think would be perfect. I need to look again. The worsted weight skein that they used had 155 yards and the woman, uh, the directions say, the woman, the directions say that you need to make sure your gauge is spot on because it uses every ounce of that 155 yards. You'll have just a little scrap left at the end. So I want to really make sure that I find what, what works out with a needle that works out to give me the correct gauge for that too. And excuse me while I stare longingly into the screen. I just, that just looks so pretty. Those colors all together just make me very, very happy. So I'm very happy with this skein. I can't wait to use it. Um, it's dry now. It, it dried over the weekend, so it's just now dry. And I might go ahead and cake it up and everything because I really want to use it. Um, although I don't know when. <laughs> because I have a bazillion things planned and on the needles and... I want Zuzu's petals out of this though, and I think it'll be really nice. Uh, the gradient, the ones that are gradient that I've seen out there are just so pretty. The solid ones are pretty too, but just it works so well as a gradient. So why not use that, right? So there's Cool Madras. Um, it was six ounces, so it may be a little heavy. It was six ounces, and I got right at 156 yards of a three ply. So oh, and I'm ignoring the phone. And this is the skein that I had when I was, I can't even hear that. <laughs> this is the skein that I had to take off of the skein, off of the bobbins so that I would have a bobbin to apply the cool madras onto. And this is some very old neighborhood fiber. Matter of fact, I mentioned to one of my friends at my knit group that something, what was it that was neighborhood fiber? That's my school. <laughs> We're going to try and ignore them. They're calling about announcements. <sighs> so, 
I mentioned to my friend that neighborhood fiber, I had a couple braids of neighborhood fiber roving and she looked at me like I was crazy. And I don't even know that they that she does it anymore. I don't think Corita does dye fiber anymore. But she used to at the very beginning. She dyed um, fiber. This is a silk and merino. I have more silk and merino. Matter of fact, I think I've shown here before that there's a brown, blue, white combination that I I love. And she used to have in a sock and in fiber. And I bought sock and fiber of it um, that I still have one braid to spin. But this one is a silk and merino. And this is... This is the pink. I can never remember the color names and which neighborhood goes to which color, but it's pretty. And I'm not really a pink girl. This was actually given to me by my aunt, but that's really pretty. And I love the sheen in it. I love how nice and even it's it spun. I spun this for the remainder of the um, Spinzilla spinning that I did. And I, I got, this is 64 yards Navajo plied, so I must have gotten about 120-ish yards um, during Spinzilla. So there's another little skein. And I have a little mini skein that I took off of here when I weighed it just to see how many yards I got. Um, and I'm going to show you guys that trick again in a little while. Or not again. I'm going to show you the trick to weighing just a portion of your yarn in order to figure out how much is probably on the whole bobbin. So I'll show you that trick in just a little while. So this was Neighborhood Fiber. I also, if I get time and if everything runs accordingly, I joined the Spin Your Bin Challenge. And so this was the first thing for Spin the spin Your Bin because I started spinning this in January and um, the challenge ran for January. So I had these bobbins in the picture that I put down for my for my start picture. So this will this is one item for Spin Your Bin. I have 12... I have 12 quantities. Some of the quantities that I have are a little bit um, bigger and are kind of broken down into two or three items e because the quantity had to be at least two ounces. So some things that like one of my natural skeins for um, for the from my Maryland Sheep and Wool Fleece will be three entries because I'll do two I'll do three two ounce bits from it. But so I spun that and then I'm on to the second one already. The spin your bin has really kind of lit a fire under me. So this is half of a braid. Um, the other half is, is attached to the wheel because I started spinning it, spinning it already. This I dyed up myself. And so I don't, the color does not look like it's coming out there. It's a very startling, almost electric blue. It's, Caribbean waters on crack maybe and there's some places that are a little bit green there are some places that are a little bit lighter blue and there's some places that are just a deep marine blue it's so it's turquoise but it's got more depth to it and this my family and I spun up my sister and my mom and I if I don't know if you're from this area or if you remember, because I know it wasn't just this one area that got it, but in 2010, right? Yes. In 2010, Snowmageddon, we were all snowed in, and we were inside this house together for seven days. And at the time, my sister's husband was stationed in Chile, and she was not there with him. She was here with us so that she could still work um, as a dietitian. So my sister was here, my mother was here, my son was here, my mom was here, my dad was here. There were five of us here inside these walls for seven days. After a while, the walls, I, I sat here one day just so fed up with being in the house and the walls, I swear, were doing this. I'm just like, oh, I can't take it anymore. I can't take it anymore. I can't take it anymore. <laughs> so oh, it was crazy. Um, but this, we had snow after snow after snow after snow. We had um, on our street, the snowplow had come by so many times. There was one narrow lane out of the neighborhood. And we have, our, our street is kind of narrow, but the main street is four cars wide because people park their cars on both sides of the street and you can still have two cars pass each other in the middle of the road. We had one path, one car length long out of the neighborhood. And if you were going up the, na up the driveway and somebody else was coming in the driveway, you had to pull into where some, where some other neighbor had shoveled out their, their car. It, where the space they had for their car, you had to pull yourself into that space in order to let the other car pass because the rest of it was all snowbank. And the snowbank was so high, I have a picture somewhere of my son sitting. We have a stop sign. We're the first, first house on the, on the street. So there's 
you know, you go down our yard and there's a stop sign right there. And I have a picture of him sitting on the snowbank, eating snow, and the stop sign is right beside him. Like he's sitting here and he's like hugging the stop sign. That's how high the snowbank was. We were snowed in like crazy. And after that time, nothing in this house that was natural colored, no fiber, no yarn, nothing came out of there white. So we dyed this with Wilton's cake dyes. And I've had this and had this and had this just kind of waiting to see, well, what am I going to do with it? What am I going to do with it? And I didn't, wasn't really sure. And then for the spin the bin, spin your bin challenge, I decided to put it in there because I can do long draw with this. I believe we ordered this fiber from um, Crown Mountain Farms, which is no longer operating. Um, he sold the business, Klaus was his name, sold the business so that he could move back with his family and take care of his ailing parents. Um, so it's not there anymore, but they used to sell humongous balls of bear fiber for an excellent, excellent deal. And I think I even got it when it was on sale at one time. So I'm unsure exactly what kind of fiber this is, but it's so nice and grabby that I can spin it long draw. So this is what I decided to grab out this time because I knew I could do, I knew I would be um, comfortable doing it in between with all the pinching that I've been doing with my hands. Because like I said, the cotton really kind of messes with my hands and knitting on small diameter needles kind of messes with my hands. So knitting the sock and the cotton fiber at the same time was a bit much for my hands. So this is the second item for Spin Your Bin and that's what I've been spinning lately. So that's up next. And I think that's pretty much it for spinning. Unless I get time, I might I might cue something in here, so you might see me go away and come back. And I might talk about the, um, I might show the other things that are in my bin. So, let's move on to, oh, the things you can think. Okay, so I'd like to show you my bin for Spin Your Bin. So I have one bag on top here because it's already got the project inside. And this is the Neighborhood Fiber that I was talking about earlier. So this is a skein, no, I'll show you the other stuff first. Let me show you the fiber first. It'll be more magical that way. This is Neighborhood Fiber Company, one of my favorite dyers of all time, and she's local right here. Um, she's in Baltimore now. And this is a merino silk roving in the Brightwood colorway. I don't think she may even makes this color anymore. And like I said, I don't think she does fiber anymore either. But I love the blue and brown and white colorway. It's very earthy to me. This is one skein I've already done. Don't ask me how many yards are in there because I don't remember. But this is a Navajo ply. And so I'm going to do the same thing with the other to have, you know, for hopes of having um, something in a larger project. Probably maybe a cowl out of that. That would be nice. So that's one item. And that's one spin. So the, in the spin your bin, you are supposed to challenge yourself. You need to have at least 12 two ounce portions to spin for the year just to challenge yourself to finish things up and get things you know kind of moving through your stash so I'm looking to see if the original tag from that skein was there oh and I do see it maybe did I write it on there no oh and that's not even that that's not that this might be... Nope, that's from a skein of sock yarn. Okay. The second thing I have, and this is going to actually be a cup... This is actually going to be just one, and I'm not going to do this whole thing. This is the fiber that I've been making into my own little homemade poonies and spinning on my Turkish spindle. So this is a skein. This is a braid from Creatively Dyed, who is another independent spinner. Um, I got this years ago at Stitches, and it's been at least... I haven't been to Stitches since, I haven't been to Stitches since it was in Baltimore and it's been in Connecticut for at least, what, four or five years? So it's been a while and I think I got this from the first time I ever saw Creatively Dyed at Stitches. So this is Sea Cell and Merino and it's beautiful but it's very, very slippery and I knew it would be a pain for me to spin regular so making it into poonies on my hand cards and spinning it on my Turkish spindle is a dream. I'm actually thinking if I get on a kick and just want to make a bunch of poonies that I might do the whole braid and do it on my wheel. Um, but I think if, I, if I'm doing it on my wheel it'll be more long draw style and I think I'll go through a poonie in like five minutes. So I think it's a lot more 
preparation time than I'm willing to put in. But to spend the time on, a, you know, like a little travel project, which is where I, I take my Turkish spindle sometimes when I go places or go away on a trip or something. So I'm only going to do two more ounces of this for the Spin Your Bin Challenge just because of the prep involved. But this is gorgeous. And there's actually, I'm going to do two more ounces of this. This is still, this still weighs seven ounces and I've done, I think I've made like 20 punis out of it. So, and it still weighs seven ounces. So it must've been an eight ounce braid. Um, but it's gorgeous. Isn't it gorgeous? It reminds me of like sun tanning in the Caribbean or something. I don't, I don't know. It's gorgeous. I love it. And very, very soft, very shiny, um, very luxurious. So those are two of the things. And then, sorry to be out of shot. Here's the rest of the bin, which it looks kind of empty without those things in there. <laughs> There's the rest of the bin, and I'll show you what else is in here. So the first thing, let me get the big guy out of the way. This is the way um, I sent, I bought a skein, no I didn't. I bought a fleece that was already washed from Maryland Sheep and Wool this year. It was called, um, from a, a sheep called Jemima, and it was a BFL mix. And I sent it off to a fiber mill here in Maryland, and... I'm not going to remember their names. Oh, I'm not going to remember their names. I'll try and edit it in. Hopefully you're seeing it here-ish. Uh, this is the way they give their their um, bumps. So this is a bump of roving. And you pull from the center and spin right from there. So I'm going to spin one more of these. These weigh about six ounces each. So this is three spins. This is three two-ounce spins. Um, so this will be three spins for for um, the spin your bin so that now I have three now I have five done so there's five this is six you've already seen that one the cool madras that I already finished is seven so here's number eight which is a loop bat this loop bat is Indian summer beautiful colors more, much more my colors than the one I'd spun previously so I love that idea. I love that one. What did I say that was? Eight. Okay. Number nine is... <gasps> number nine is this that I showed you guys last week. I really want to try and spin this. This is a super fine merino and I'm a little bit scared. But when I was messaging back and forth with the seller, she assured me that the super fine merino should be different than just a regular merino that I've spun before. So I'm anxious to try it and see if it works. Um, and I did go ahead and sign back up for her club. So I guess that's three things for enabling. <laughs> but this was in the Harry Potter um, club. This is Ginny for Ginny Weasley from Harry Potter. And I think that's beautiful, beautiful. A, that is a beautiful color representation for Ginny. Kind of fiery and earthy at the same time. Very powerful looking. I really like that. Ginny's one of my favorite characters. So I was really impressed with that. Um, so I signed back up for three more months for her club, um, which it's like right at $20. Um, right. So it's right at $20, about two, two to $3 for shipping. So it wasn't very expensive at all. I thought that was a really good deal. So that's nine. Okay. Here's 10, which is another fat cat knits gradient. This one has blues to kind of yellow and green to there's a little bit of brown there. And then at the very bottom is red. And this colorway is called Frog and Carp. Hilarious. And again, it's a six ounce, six ounces of a gradient. This is um, Superface BF, or Superface, Superwash BFL. Um, and this, I think I'll be able to do long draw as well. So that'll be a nice break for my hands from the spinning. So this is, this is going to be great. And since this is Superwash BFL, my hope is to get socks out of this. So I want to spin very, very fine and get lots and lots of yardage to do um, a three-ply sock. But after out of six ounces, I hope I should be able to do it, right? I hope, I hope, I hope. So that was 10. Yes. And here's 11 and 12. So 11 and 12 are both the same colorways. This is a wool gathering. These are wool gatherings. And this is... Do, 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 do. This is BFL as well, 100% BFL. These I got probably two years ago from Cloverhill Yarn Shop. They were taking these to 
Maryland Sheep and Wool. Um, Clover Hill used to be what I considered my local yarn shop, but I've moved away several years ago. It's been, I think, eight years now. And it's a long haul for me to go to Baltimore. But I used to go on a fairly regular basis to spinning. And the night before they would pack up for Sheep and Wool, they would have spinning and they would let us, or I guess it was like the week before, they would have spinning and, and the owner would kind of let us take a sneak peek in the bins for the things that she was taking to Sheep and Wool. <laughs> so these I snagged right away. And again, very similar colors. This and this, right? Very similar. Deep reds with browns and earthy tones. I love it. I love it. I love it. So, and these are identical skeins. So this is eight ounces. So this, I'm hoping, should be a nice something, right? So very nice. Um, and I'm anxious to spin that too. So I'm really anxious to have all of these things in a bin where I know that they're, I'm waiting, you know, they're waiting for me to spin, to spin them for this particular challenge so that I can get some of these things done out because I would love to have the yarn. Love, love, love. I would love to have the yarn, um, to do something with. And I'm very excited about the cool madras because I have lots of hand spun yarn around, but I rarely ever knit with it. Rarely ever. Um, so I'm excited about the cool madras because I just spun it and I already have a plan of what I want to do and what I want to make it into. So that's a, that's a first for me is having spun something and then I know what I want to make with it. I can't wait to cast it on. So hopefully that having more of my hand spun yarn around will inspire me to continue on that same trend and having things ready to spin or having things ready to knit with what I've just spun. So that's my bin for 2014. By the end of the year, that should all be done and all be yarn. Um, I can tell you that I'll probably have to trick myself into spinning the the plain fiber for the sweater. Um, I'm just spinning Jemima. This is a little bit hard on my hands. I cannot do a long draw with this and get it to be the texture that I want. Um, I'm not happy with the way the texture is when I do the long draw. So I'm doing more of a worsted spin with it. No, woolen spin with it. And that's hard on my hands. So I will probably have to do a little bit of the color work in something with long draw and then do a two ounce portion of Jemima. So probably after I get done with the blue because the blue will be um, done with long draw, that I am doing the blue as a long draw, then I'll do two ounces of this and then I'll put it back do a couple more things of color, come back and do two ounces of this so that it gets done. Otherwise it won't because I've had this back. I've, I got it in, um, I want to say I got it in June or July. Um, you know, partway through the summer I've had it and I've done, I have done one skein. So next week I should be sure to show you guys, um, the one finished skein that I have because I did a little bit of sampling and I did do one bobbin that I plied up. Um, and it's going to be a Navajo ply. It, and it looks beautiful. So I really need to do it and get it done with so that I have the yarn to make a sweater with because I could do another sweater without having to buy a sweater's worth of yarn because I have it. If you could see how much I have, I'll show you the whole big bag of Jemima next week too. So something to look forward to. Other than that, I think that's it for now. Um, you probably <laughs> you probably don't even know, but you guys missed out on some a whole big thing. I had a big segment where I was going to show you how to measure mystery yarn and see how much you have left, and my scale wouldn't work. Actually, I think it's the yarn is too light, and it wouldn't work. So hopefully I'll have things working for that too. And next week I should show you Jemima and the finished skein of Jemima, and I should show you how to, number one, measure mystery yarn and see how much you have, how much yardage you have, and number two, figure out what fiber the mystery yarn is. So until then, I hope your knitting makes you happy. Bye for now.